All right, let me go ahead and show you how to get started with Bookdown. Uh, so very first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the Bookdown package. If you've not already, install.packages Bookdown, same as you would any other package. All right, um, so I have already installed it, um, but if you haven't, it might take a little bit longer. Okay, now that you have installed the package, let's create a new project. So I will go to new directory. You could choose existing directory as well. The important thing is when you get to this project type, scroll down to book project using Bookdown. You can choose a directory. Uh, I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to call this uh, Bookdown example. OK. Now you can select your format. There's Git book or there's BS4 book. BS4 book is a, a new um, look and feel. Git book is a traditional one. Um, I'll choose the new one. So at this point, I can actually create a book based on this default content. So I can go up to the build tab here. And if I click build book, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of the R Markdown documents and it will combine them and make a book project using Bookdown. It takes just a minute or so, um, depending on how big your, your project is, to render everything. All right, let's look at the files that have been created. Most important for our purposes are the HTML files. You can see the HTML files, and they represent one file for each R Markdown document. So for example, the index.html comes from the index.rmd file, right? So they, they each are um, from a corresponding R Markdown document. Now you're going to note that there are also markdown documents.md files. We don't really need those. They just get generated as we render to Bookdown. But there's also a PDF. And this PDF is automatically rendered whenever we create a book. All right, so this is the index.html. It's just the default content uh, that has been added to this minimal book example. Uh, but you can see it is a book. Um, so this is the home page. Um, and I can scroll through and see anything. If I click on chapter two, it'll take me to the Hello Book Down, cross references, parts, etc. So again, what's happening is it's taking all of the R Markdown documents in my root directory, and then it's putting them, it's rendering them to HTML, putting them in the underscore book directory. The other file that I want to look at is the index.rmd file. This is the only file that has YAML front matter in it, as opposed to the other R Markdown documents, which were just blank, did not have that YAML. And you can see, for example, we set things like the title, the author, the date, site book down, um, double colon book down site shows um, what this will be rendered to. It's like your output format. And then there are a bunch of other things, description, things about um, citations, etc. cetera. Um, so this is, again, the index.rmd, which is going to be slightly different than our other files. Um, to show you how I could make changes, let's show, for example, let's say I want to delete this uh, references. So I'll just go ahead and click delete. And then let me go ahead and build again and watch what happens. All right, I've rebuilt my book, removing that references uh, section. So I haven't actually hit refresh. So let me hit refresh now and let's see what's happened. So if you notice, that has actually gone away. Uh, it was here, and now it no longer is. And that's because I removed 07 references, right? Now, the numbers don't line up because it automatically creates the numbers. So for example, this about page is actually the index.rmd. doesn't have a number. The numbers are for the ordering, the numbers here. And I'll show you how we can uh, change that. OK, now we've learned how to remove some of the default content. Let's talk about how to add some default content. So if I go New File, R Markdown, I'll just leave it, whatever the default content is. Well, let me go ahead and delete it now. OK, let me look in this 01 intro. You can see that it's an R Markdown document, but it doesn't have a YAML. 
The reason why is we actually have some special YAML files. You can actually see them here, the book down and output YAML files that will set options for the entire project rather than setting them individually uh, for individual R Markdown documents. Okay, so um, let me just copy this just to have some content here. Um, and I'm gonna save this and I will go ahead and save this as uh, I'll do 07 test. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and build this again. And what's gonna happen is it will automatically include the content of this 07test.rmd file. Because again, it's looking for just all our markdown documents and it takes those and it creates them as part of your project. Okay, I'm back in my rendered version of my bookdown project. Let me hit refresh. Now note that the last chapter is the sharing your book seven. So keep an eye there as I refresh. Okay, so you can see now I have chapter eight, Hello Book Down. Of course, it's the same as chapter two uh, because I copied the content um, and I could click on it and see it. So that's how we can both delete content as well as add our own content. All right, we've talked now about um, individual R Markdown documents. Let's actually look at some of these YAML files to help us understand how Bookdown works. The first file that I'm gonna look at is the bookdown.yaml file. Um, so you can see when I open it, it will give me some default content here. So in my default content, it has the book file name. Um, I think that's the name of the file that gets rendered when we create a PDF, which I'll show you shortly. Um, new session is whether you need to, whether you want to render in a completely fresh session. Um, a lot of these things just starting out don't really matter. The most important thing that I want to show you is how you could, for example, create your own files um, and have it render using those files as opposed to, you know, what it's done so far, which is look for the, the order of the files. So that's why, for example, it goes 01 intro, 02 cross refs. Um, but we can also just manually set files and tell uh, Bookdown in this bookdown.yaml which files to include and what order to include them. To show you how we could um, manually set the order at this point, I'm going to delete these, everything except for the index.rmd. And at this point, I could actually build my book. It's going to be a pretty boring book because it's just going to have the uh, homepage, the landing page. Okay, so I've gone back to my book. You can see now it just has one page. Okay, let me go ahead and add some new files now. So I'm going to go to new file, our markdown, I'll just hit blank. Now remember that the content of my index.rmd had the YAML but the other R Markdown documents that we had before, the ones that I deleted, they did not have that. So I can actually just get rid of all of this content. So I'll just do that. And I'm just gonna add, um, I'm gonna pretend this is my introduction. So I'll do a first level header introduction. And then I am going to do some lorem ipsum default content. Um, so let me call this introduction. And let me also make a new file for a conclusion. Uh, again, I'll just do default content, conclusion, and then paste in my lorem ipsum, and I'll save this as conclusion. Now, if I render this, what's gonna actually happen is the order's not gonna be right. It'll always put the index file first. That will show up as kind of the landing page for the book. But then it will look in alphabetical order. And so conclusion comes before introductions. All right, I've come back, I've refreshed the page, and you can see if you look at the table of contents, we have about, conclusion, then introduction. That's not what we want. Let's fix that. All right, so to fix that, let's work in the bookdown.yaml. So I'm gonna add rmd underscore files, files, and then uh, open square bracket, close square brackets. And here, I'm gonna actually list the order of the files that I want to display. So first, I'll do index.rmd, 
Then I'll do introduction.rmd. Then I'll do conclusion.rmd. Now I'll go build this book again, and we'll see if that actually fixed it. Okay, back in my book, let me go ahead and refresh, keep an eye on the table of contents. Let's make sure that that changes. Perfect, now I have about, introduction, conclusion. Let's take a look now at the output.yaml and see what we can do there. So the output.yaml has a bunch of things similar to the bookdown.yaml. For the most part, we don't really need to change it. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple things you can change. First thing I'm going to do is on line four. This is the primary color that shows up as part of our book. So if I look at it, this kind of uh, teal green that's used throughout, and it's also um, used down here in the footer, that's that color. I'm going to change this. Um, this is going to be a very bright orange, not something I would probably recommend, but for now, it's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and render this again. All right, let me go ahead and refresh this and let's see if that orange shows up. Ah, there you go, very orange. The other thing you can do to tweak um, how your output looks is this style.css. So you have a CSS file. You do have to, of course, understand a bit of CSS um, and you can tweak things. So for example, um, this is a first level header. And I know that because if I look here, you can see it's a first level header. So if I put, let's say H1, and I'm gonna do uh, font size 100 pixels. Let me render that. Again, this isn't something I would actually do, but just to show you how you can tweak it. All right, let me hit refresh and let's see if that changed it. Perfect, I have a giant H1. All right, let me show you just a couple other things we can do to tweak the output. So by default, Bookdown will have numbering on your section, so you can see one about, 1.1 usage. If you wanna get rid of that, let me show you how you can do it. There are different ways to do this depending on which Bookdown uh, format you're using. For the BS4 book, unfortunately, you can't set it globally. You can't set it so that it just removes section numbering throughout. Instead, the way we have to do it is this. So we add this curly bracket minus uh, close curly bracket. And let me go ahead and render that. Let me build the book. And you'll see that it'll render that without that section. All right, the book is finished rendering. Let me refresh. There we go, about has been removed. And you'll see also that it has now removed it from the table of contents, so it doesn't show up there either. Now, of course, all the other sections still have it, so we have 0.1 usage, et cetera. Um, so unfortunately, you do need to go out through on every single header and, and add that um, curly bracket minus curly bracket if you want to remove it. The other thing I want to show you is how to add sections. If you look at my R Without Statistics book, I have introduction, illuminate, communicate, automate as my sections. Let's show how you can do that in Bookdown. All right, to do this, uh, I am in the introduction, and let's say I wanna have some you know, section break kind of before the introduction starts. So the way I would do it was with this format, um, hashtag part, uh, parentheses part, backslash, asterisk. Don't ask me why it's like this, but this is what you do. And what you need to do then is you also need to give the, that a title. So let's say, I don't know, um, First section, I'll just make it, um, actually, no, I'm not gonna make it. I'll just call it first section. And let me then copy that and put it, uh, put another break here. And I'll call this second section. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and build this again and we can see what happens. All right, now I've opened up my file. You can see I have first section, second section there. All right, so now I've showed you how to make a book down project, how to render it, um, and you're probably thinking, great, but I just have it on my local computer, so what good is this? It doesn't really serve me because I can't share it with anybody. Let me show you how you can do that. So I'm assuming at this point that you know how to uh, use Git and GitHub, at least at a very basic level. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to initialize a Git repository, and then I'm going to push it to GitHub. So to do that, I'll do uh, library use this, and I'll do use Git. Uh, okay to commit them. Yes, commit everything uh, for sure. Okay, now I'm going to use use GitHub. And I can keep everything default. The only thing I want to do is I want to push this to the R for the rest of us organization account, not to my personal account. So I will do uh, organization equals R for the rest of us. Hit enter. And it will push everything there. Take me there, and great. Now I have this here. Now at this point, people can see my code, but they can't actually see the book itself. So for example, if they go into the book here, and let's say they open up uh, index.html, that's gonna actually show you the code for the index.html file, not the rendered version of it. So there's several ways to render it. Personally, I think the best way to do this is using a service called Netlify. I'll go ahead and log in. I've already created an account, um, so I'll log in with my GitHub credentials. And now what I'm going to do, and you can actually see here is uh, the project that I have created for uh, my own Bookdown project. So I'll do add new site. I'm going to import an existing project because it's a project that lives on GitHub. It will log me in. Let me switch to the R for the rest of us account. I can find book down example. Now I need to select the branch that I want to deploy. So for me, that'll just be the main branch. The, the, um, it might be called master, whatever your default branch name is. Then I have to choose the base directory. In other words, where should it look for files to render? And remember, by default, it will put things in the underscore book directory, right? Like there aren't HTML files here. So we don't want it to render from that directory. We want it to render from the underscore book directory. So underscore book. And now I can hit deploy site. What it's going to do now is, is Netlify will go, it will grab all the HTML files in that underscore book directory, pull them here, and then deploy them. And instead of showing the code for the HTML files, it'll actually show us the rendered version. So I can even click here, and I can see that it is deploying. Uh, it's really fast. And so at the end, you will get a message that says, site is live. Now, if you're wondering, OK, like where is it? Let me go back here. And if I go to site overview, you can see by default, it will give me a kind of random URL. There we go. That is our book down project. Now, you can change this. I could hit, for example, domain settings, and I could edit the site name. I could call this book down example. There we go. And now, lives on bookdown-example.netlify.app. All right, I hope that's helpful. We've gone from installing Bookdown, creating our own project, customizing the output, adding new files, deleting files, pushing it to GitHub, and finally rendering it for the world to read on Netlify.